Hey, I'm Morgan Page. Thanks for joining us at Press Pass TV. The legendary Blue Horizon in Philadelphia has been hosting boxing matches since the 60s and producing world champs along the way. Go inside fight night at the Blue and see why everyone involved with this building is fighting to keep its doors open. Best remembered today as appearing in the film Rocky V, the Blue Horizon Boxing Center has had a long history before that film. Being voted the number one boxing venue in the world by The Ring Magazine, and named the last great boxing venue in America by Sports Illustrated. Beginning in 1914, three original 1865 homes were renovated to house the loyal order of the Moose Fraternal Group. They built a ballroom, bar, and auditorium inside, which would eventually grow to have over 20,000 members in six years, the highest of any fraternal lodge in the world at that time. Less than a decade later, that number had doubled, and they planned to renovate again, just before the Great Depression hit and all plans were scrapped. Finally, in 1961, the building was purchased and given its current name after the song Beyond the Blue Horizon from the 1930 film Monte Carlo. Maybe a main entrance? Oh yeah, here's the main entrance. There's like for the tickets right here. And apparently it was used to store couches and everything. The first match held inside was Hall of Fame boxer George Benton against Chico Corsi. Weekly matches would be held by New York promoter Marty Kramer as a part of a grant to develop new fighters. It's a ton of records. Like a shit ton. Jeez. All sorts of different kinds, too. <laughs> Is that... That's not bingo, but that's some sort of a, like, a lottery ball thing there. It just had a bar on every level, so you didn't have to go far to get a beer while you're watching the game. Two years later, three nationally televised fights were held here. During the 80s, USA Network frequently filmed here as part of their Tuesday Night Fights cable series. But in 1966, after an exciting 10-round match between Gypsy Joe Harris and Johnny Knight, the Blue Horizon would close for three years. It was brought back by 22-year-old sports writer J. Russell Peltz, who broke venue attendance records with 16,006 spectators at his first of many cards held at the Blue Horizon, of which included many worldwide boxing champions. Or just maybe office rooms, meeting rooms, no food or beverages in this area. Oh. Somebody busted off in there. Let's go see. This was like a closed off section that's probably been not used. Because, yeah, they even look up there, you can see they had that closed off. Just more, yeah, offices or rooms for stuff. This might have been where uh, he was staying in here. That he, he just got kicked out recently, I heard. It's just a ton of, like, closed-off older sections that they at some point started to clean up and then gave up, obviously. It's even the floors ripped up in there. For uh, hanging clothes they kept in here. I don't know if it was just, you know, uniforms or if it was just, like, other people's clothes. It's uh, something as well. In 1994, three women purchased the venue, including Vernoka Michael, the first female African-American boxing promoter in the state. This particular facility has been able to light the way to shine uh, up and down Broad Street, indicating 
that there is life. You come here Friday night, you will not be able to get through. You come here on a Saturday night, you will not be able to get through. A little bar there, and then that's upstairs. Check out that light. There's just some really cool like lighting and everything in here. It's like they stored all the chair seating in here. Just a moose head up there. We're watching over the whole thing. Like, this, look at these yeah. Little, like, holes and everything. That's definitely they projected like something in there. Yeah, like I'm not sure what, but. Many international, regional, and state title fights were held inside, and in 1997, the first International Boxing Federation Super Middleweight Crown fight was held here. Michael had also worked on making Blue Horizon a neighborhood cultural center by partnering with nearby colleges, which earned her recognition as one of the top 50 state businesswomen in 2008. The venue could also be rented out for events, weddings, and concerts such as Weezer in 2001. In 2006, scenes for the film Annapolis would be filmed inside as well. Over its years, only two boxers would die as a result of their injuries in the ring. The first was Clarence Jody White in 1978, and the last was Francisco Rodriguez in 2009. Despite still having regular shows and ESPN2 filming their Friday Night Fight series here, the venue was becoming run down and having tax issues, resulting in it closing permanently in 2010. The following year, a $6 million grant was approved for a developer to build a hotel and restaurant complex on the grounds of the gym. Despite being listed as an official Philadelphia historical site in 2000, 15 years later, a nomination for protection to the interior of the building was denied, with the Philadelphia Historical Commission only voting to designate the exterior facade worthy of protection. In 2021, a new plan to build a high-rise on the site was put forward that would incorporate the facade into storefronts, but as of yet, the former venue that held sold-out shows sees only a few people enter through its doors for now. The legendary Blue Horizon is the best place I've ever watched a fight, including Vegas, because you're right on top of the fighters. Every, every seat is a ringside seat. Um, it's just become, over the years, just a place to fight. It's amazing how many calls I get from Europe. Fighters, they get tremendous money to say, Don, put me on at the Blue. It's just to say, I fought at the Blue. Legendary Blue Rising, I mean a lot of the best fall here. The crowd is so much closer than any other place that you will ever box. It just puts that much pressure on you, and then you hear the ghosts of all these past fighters like Jeff Chandler, and they are really in there fighting to prove themselves worthy of being a Philadelphia fighter. 